Hi everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So, uh, yeah, not spoken to you for a little while, but I thought we'd sit down, have a catch up, got a mug of tea, and um, yeah, slightly different video for you this time because it's that time of year where I think we get a little reflective. Um, slightly cold, but never mind. Um, and for me, I certainly get reflective in terms of my handbags. <laughs> Don't worry, this isn't like full on Joe's life. Um, so yeah, so firstly, apologies, I haven't filmed for a while. Just a lot going on, trying to get ready for Christmas. Work has been really busy and I just have not had that time at the weekends to sit down and film. I just haven't managed to push myself there. Um, so yeah, if I'm a little all over the place today as well, um, the beagle went missing two days ago. He came back after a six hour adventure. We're still checking that everything's okay because he ate something he shouldn't have done. So um, yeah, and obviously he went missing for six hours so we don't know what. So um, yes, we've done a vet trip, he's been checked out and we're now just keeping an eye on things. So I'm, I'm slightly distracted. Um, that's why, but I will do my best to have clarity of thought because I've been reflecting on um, what a handbag year it's been. And I think with COVID it's been, it's, it's been strange because I always have had the compunction to buy more, but, the re but less of a reason to actually go out and use it. It's been a strange one. Um, I guess we all cope with things how we cope with them. But I thought I'd reflect on the bags that I've sold and the bags that I've bought. So I'm going to split this video into two parts. So part one is going to be the handbags that I sold and why. And part two will be briefly showing you as like a little recap of all the handbags that I have bought this year. So there will be stuff that you obviously would have seen unboxed already. Um, and there will also be stuff that perhaps I sold it during 2020 which isn't included. The other part of this is I am soon, I definitely am, going to film, over the Christmas period, I'm going to film um, my entire handbag collection. And the last time I filmed that, um, I actually published it on the 15th of July 2018. And um, there's been a lot of, of change really has as um yeah massive massive change it's it's you know surprised even myself and I'm the one that's done it so first off I'm going to use my phone for notes um because it's so easy to forget things um and I think actually more have left the house than have come in so let's just do a quick summary so nine have left the family and six have come in. That sounds quite good, but there's quite a difference between what's left and what's come in, monetary wise. Anyway, let's kick off. So, no great order to this. I'm gonna just do it, I'll do it by brand where there's more than one, but it's quite varied. So, the first bag that, that I'm gonna talk about is my Mulberry Small Cara, which I owned in the GOAT. Um, and I had the khaki, the green, yeah, the khaki uh, camouflage version. Now, it's a great little bag. For a small bag, I'll, I'll, and as I go through, I'll put pictures in because I haven't got the stuff anymore to show you. So for part one, we'll have to do with pictures where I can find them. So it's a great little bag. It held a lot, had a nice suede lining. Typically, it's proper old mulberry, and the cars were, certainly the, the earlier cars that I bought were made in, Somerset in England as well. Great quality, great craftsmanship, but a little weighty. Um, so this bag was great. You could wear it just using the handle. You could have it over the shoulder. You could have it as a backpack. Um, the leather was gorgeous. I actually had a little purse and a pouch to match. I sold the whole lot. Individually, actually. I tried to set a set, but it didn't work. Um, and the leather had this real tactile feel. It was really durable, but just really, really tactile. So, great bag. 
that I just stopped reaching for. I think for, for that and it was the last, it was actually the last of my mulberry to leave the flock. Um, the last one before that was my Bayswater, but that wasn't this year, that was last year. That's That, that went uh, at the end of last year. So yeah, it, it was a great bag, um, but I didn't reach for it. And I was like, there's no point having this bag in my collection, taking up what little storage space I have in my small house, and I'm not using it. Um, my tastes have just evolved a little bit and I just tend to reach for my Hermes so much, I really do. So that was the reason that I sold that bag. Um, obviously I didn't sell it for even half what I paid for it. Um, you know, Mulberry is, is a brand that isn't going to be an investment brand. Um, but my taste changed and I thought I may as well have a little bit of money and more importantly have her go to a new loving home. So that's what happened with that one. So next, um, I had a Givenchy Small Antigona in the official colour was eggplant. It was basically a burgundy aubergine colour. I had it in the pebbled leather and I bought that after, I originally bought a burgundy patent deer leather bag, um, which I got in the sale from Little Porte. Um, on, even on my second one, they replaced one, I was on my second one, and it was just too delicate. So I got this pebbled leather one to make up for this one that I took back that I knew I couldn't live with leather that was going to just get destroyed. And um, I guess maybe I just never felt enough love for her. Um, and it was a great bag, I know when I used it for work, it was a great bag, fitted a tonne, the opening wasn't amazing, that was one of the cons, um, but then the, the real noun, well, also I found on two occasions, I didn't think this would ever happen to me, but on two occasions, how the strap slots in, it did actually come out by itself. Now it's fine, I didn't drop the bag on the floor or anything, but it was close. Um, I think I'd been using the bag over my shoulder, fine, no problem, sat down on the train, on the way home from work, got up again to leave and it just kind of fell off. So it must have shifted just on my lap somehow. Don't know, happened too easy for my liking, so that was a worry. Um, but then basically I bought my Hermes Garden Party 36 in either Rouge, I don't know how you pronounce it, Rouge, my essay says Rouge, Rouge. So um, it was just too similar a colour. The garden party is bigger and holds more and is an open tote. So yes, it's different to the style and the, I love the structure of the Givenchy. Um, but I just knew that if given the choice out of the two, I would reach for the Hermes garden party. And for my collection, the, the size that it is now, which is around 25, I'll count up properly when I do the um, whole bag collection, 25, 26. Um, I just knew I wouldn't reach for it, you know, it was, I've, I've talked before on my channel about competition between my bags and this is, a not, this is the reason for the majority of my sales actually, because I'm not too impetuous, I normally research a bag quite well before buying it, so I don't have many mistakes or regrets, um, it literally just, sometimes it just comes down to, I've got two similar bags, what am I going to use more, and the other one has to go, so that's what happened with the Antigona basically. So, next, sorry I'm talking too much I know because I'm, the screen's turning off, that's a hint. Um, yeah, this is an interesting, this is my most recent sale actually. Um, my large red Prada Galleria bag, and I talked about this recently, um, it's a great bag. I bought her in 2014, um, so yeah, so I had her for what, seven years, and a great bag, a great work bag, a great office bag with organisation but with a lot of room. My laptop, my new work laptop just fitted. Um, brilliant bag, brilliant, brilliant bag. So why did I sell her? Because I bought a bright red Birkin 35 and um, what am I going to use? My Prada or my Birkin? I've got to go for my Birkin. So there was no point having, there's basically no point having two <laughs> red 
totes of equal size with gold hardware, basically. Um, so one of them had to go, and I love the Birkin. So that was why I sold that, but do not be put off. That Prada Galleria was an amazing bag. Um, I really rated it a lot for usability and durability. It was just great. Um, the next one I put on, um, and I guess this was maybe a slight mistake, but you know, live and learn. Uh, it's my Louis Vuitton um, Graceful PM, and I had it in the Demi Azur with the rose ballerine lining. Beautiful, beautiful bag, lightweight, held a decent amount. Fair bit of uh, fichetta leather in terms of the strap, so if you're cautious about that, be warned. Didn't reach for her. I think it was. I like a more structured bag generally, but this wasn't that unstructured. And I bought a mini pochette and a pouch as well, um, a Liverpool pouch separately, to help with organisation. I could have bought a bag liner, I know, but I didn't. And um, hardly reach for, use a handful of, not even a handful of times. And all I can think of is that I just found the Demi Azur print harder to wear because my monogram never fall, I use a lot, and it's a different bag, but I use a lot, and I wanted something in Demi Azure, I deliberately bought the Graceful PM because I wanted something in Demi Azure, and I didn't want a never fall because I didn't want two of the same bag, so I guess live and learn that Demi Azure is not a print for me, I mean look what I'm wearing now, just black leggings, just black leggings and a leg print, it's not going to go, thought it'd be more summer print, but yeah, just, just didn't work out, so that was that, um, also on Louis Vuitton, I bought pre-loved a Alma PM and it was a limited edition white mono multicolour. Um didn't even use it once. Did her up and there'll be a separate video on that. Did her up and um just kept reaching for my MS bags. Also there was an issue in terms of the the, the colour from the burgundy lining leaked through so you could slightly see this like weird lilac canvas wash like lilac wash on the white canvas and um, wasn't disclosed when I bought it I'm wondering if she genuinely didn't know it was there because it's not that in your face and um, couldn't do it like I say I, I'm not against buying pre-loved whatsoever but for me I, I think I just need almost new pre-loved as opposed to well used pre-loved, I think it's just, I'm not good with it. I'm not good with imperfections on things, you know, I look after my items very well because because of that I really don't get on well with imperfections. So yeah, so I didn't reach for it. Um, again, it seems like pale Louis Vuitton bags just aren't the way to go for me. Um, another bag that I sold which was stunning was a Dior wallet on chain. Um, I think it's a Diorama. It was just beautiful in like this champagne colour. It was like a metallic leather that was so durable and it was stunning to look at. However, um, hardly used it. It was a great little event bag, but hardly used it because you could fit next to nothing in that bag. And because the leather was so stiff, there just wasn't enough give for me. Um, but saying that, it made it really durable, it held its shape well, and you know, when I sold it, it looked new. Um, so yeah, so it was beautiful, just not functional enough for me. Um, that's, that's one of the things that puts me off the petit mal. I think it's stunning, I love that trunk. Um, but it's, I'm wondering if it's too rigid. Um, so yeah, so, and the other thing as well, again, the, the final nail on the coffin was I then bought a gold Chanel bag, and again, that was that competition, I don't need two small gold bags, I only need one small gold bag, I say need. Um, so yeah, so that went, um, and then Gucci, I had a small blooms tote, and when I bought that, it was just, I remember seeing it in the airport in Iceland, and I was like, <gasps> It was love at first sight. Um, it was a reversible tote, which is weird. I'd rather it not been reversible and had a bit of organisation, but hey-ho. But the, the pink Gucci Blooms print was just stunning. It was so pretty. Um, it was a well-made bag. It was light. 
I got a liner for it which made a real difference because I had that organisation then and like a zip compartment to keep things secure so things weren't just completely swimming around and it was a great little bag but I found out, although it looks very different, but since buying my my first Hermes bag, which was my Birkin 30 in um, Rose Poop, sorry, mental block there in Rose Poop, I just didn't reach for it, I just reached for the Birkin to be honest, and I've used that, worn that Birkin so much, it just goes with so much, so that was that. And then there were two coach bags, so the first coach bag I bought for not very much in an outlet in Texas. Um, thought it would be a great little casual, little canvas bag with multicolours on it. I just didn't feel the love. I mean it was a great bag, it held a lot, it was lightweight, went with a lot, went great with jeans and a t-shirt. I just didn't reach for it. Um, so I think I sold it for about a tenner in the end. Um, but again, had the storage space, gone to a new home. And the second one was this little tangerine zip bag, little handles, again held a lot, didn't really reach for it. That was, I bought, I paid a premium for that, I bought that from New Bond Street store, new, brand new. Um, that was an impulse buy, I was walking with my mum, walking along uh, New Bond Street and just saw it, I went wow I want that and went in and bought it basically. Um, used it when I went on holiday to Texas actually, I used it quite a bit there, the leather on it was gorgeous, an amazing quality bag, um, but just didn't reach for it. So yeah, so that, that is the one, two, three, four, nine bags that I have sold this year. So like I say, the things that I look for when, when, when buying a bag or when deciding to sell a bag, you know, I, I always do think about my collection as a whole and I think about it in terms of functionality, style and colours. And if there's anything that's too, too similar, then I either won't buy the new bag, or if I just love the new bag so much, I know at that time what bag I'm going to sell. That happened with the gold Chanel. Whilst I was going through that pro buying process, I knew I was going to sell the, the wallet on chain. I just wanted to receive the Chanel to make sure I was keeping it before I then sold the Durama. Um, had small regrets but not not overall just moment temporary regrets because it was so beautiful um but it's gone to a loving new home the new owner was very happy with her and and that's the main thing she's going to fulfill her handbag of destiny um which she wasn't getting to do here there's no point i'm a strong believer in using your items and using them carefully but still using them and i don't like having just stuff in the cupboard not going anywhere now with COVID and all the lockdowns that we've had, there has been an element of that going on. But I know that's temporary and it's just because I'm not using my, you know, not living my usual life. And when I start leaving the house more, I will start taking bags with me. My husband asked me the other day, I took my Birkin to the post office, but I was just like, well, it holds what I need it to hold. So why not, you know? It's not like I'm dragging it through a bush. Um, so yeah, so those are my tips. And when when selling, when thinking about selling a bag, you know, really do think, when did I last use this? And if the answer is like, you know, as it was for me in some cases, two years, I think it's time to let go. Um, I don't find letting go very easy. I get very attached to my items, but um, you know, the very small storage space shouts at me of, um, give us some room, please. So uh, yeah. So that's that. I'm going to go now and um, please tune back for part two where it won't just be me chatting with a mug of tea, although it's rapidly getting cold, I need to drink it. Um, it will actually be me sat here with some eye candy as well. So please tune in for that. Take care everybody and if anyone wants you know, to chat anything through for thinking about making a sale then feel free to contact me and um, always happy to give an opinion. So <laughs> Take care, bye.